Hey, welcome back everyone. Rob here from Ramp Studio Comics. And in today's video, I am drawing, well, I already drew the Joker and I didn't really record it, so forgive me for that, but I'm actually gonna draw Harley Quinn for you. So the idea that presented itself to me as I was sketching the joke here, is I thought it'd be kind of cool to have Harley Quinn sitting behind him, you know, kind of looking back. And then I found this picture for reference and I thought maybe this would be a good opportunity to show you how I'd utilize reference to facilitate my comic art. So with that, I'm going to get rid of this Joker pick. I just wanted you to see kind of what led up to this because sometimes, you know, people ask like, how do you get ideas? Well, ideas are just kind of, um, you know, one thing leads to another, right? So, so basically I'm going to look at this sketch. I'm not going to trace it or nothing like that. You can trace it if you're more of a beginner. Uh, but the main thing is I just want to grab components of it. So I'm going to start with the circle. I'm going to get that angle of the face. It doesn't even got to be the exact same angle. Uh, I want to get that nice, you know, I, forgive me, I don't know who this is. Um, you guys are welcome to comment below and go, hey, dummy, it's so-and-so, because I know it's a famous actress or model, but I don't know what it is. There's just tons of great reference out there. Um, but, you know, if you comment below, I'll make sure to put that in the description, because I don't like to, you know, just not know who I'm looking at, but it wasn't on the picture. It was only labeled 5.jpg, so... I'm pretty much assuming that's not anything to do with the character. Um, so yeah, but what I like to do is like pull different uh, reference shots of um, different expressions. And I thought this was a really neat one. I actually liked the whole collar and everything to her, but mainly the facial expression. But the positioning of the head is, this is a tricky one for me to draw from memory. You know, I'm, I'm probably going to skew it a bit. So what I want to do is kind of get those components in that I find the most difficult about a shot like this. And that would be positioning the eyes in comparison to the up tilt of the nose and, you know, kind of looking, you know, up at a open mouth pose, kind of a surprise look or something like that. So I'm just going to get this M shape in there and I'm going to hurry up and get the bottom lip in. Reason why is if I draw the top lip, then the gap, then down to the bottom, I'll probably end up way down here somewhere. So sometimes the best thing is to draw the perimeter shape. Focus on that first, get the, the broad strokes in. So what you wanna do is train yourself to look past um, the details, basically. You don't wanna sit there and try to draw every little line. You wanna think in terms of shapes. And then what happens is after you kinda of get the main components of what makes this face work in the way that it does, you know, what makes her beautiful, what makes this angle all kinda of fit together, then you can stylize. For instance, as I start to apply the eyes, uh, or apply the eyes, start to draw the eyes, I'll uh, I'll try to stylize them, obviously, in a more comic book fashion. But honestly, she's got these big, beautiful doll eyes, the rounded eyes that um, that look so good for comics. But what we might do is just embellish upon these. And the thing that I think is important to note about a shot like this, notice that her eyes actually change shape. The direction of the eye dictates the shape of the eye. So you got to be aware of that. Like I think in terms of comics, we just get in the habit of just drawing the same shape and then drawing an eye on the inside, uh, pointing at whatever direction we want. And that's okay. That's obviously a stylized uh, version of that. But the more you start to pay attention to real life, you realize that the, the eyes actually curve with the eye. So the eye kind of rounds out and wherever that directs, the eye shape will change, uh, you know, it's conforming to that. So you just want to be aware of that anyways. And you can really see it right there. The, the shape, the roundedness points outward with the direction of her eye. Um, you know, with that taperedness that goes down to the tear duct. And I see mine's kind of straight. And this is force of habit. Uh, now, what happens here is I'm, I'm going to go for a stylized version. So some of uh, my uh, kind of muscle memory is going to get in the way of me capturing say her likeness right and I kind of want that because you know normally if I was trying to do a portrait I have to fight that and I got to make sure I get her likeness but we're going to draw Harley Quinn here so what I want to do is get just enough of the information from her face but then I have to kind of either hide the reference or really look through this and go for a stylized representation so little things like I might point the chin a bit more uh, I might use some stylized lines to define these curves. So instead of this nice, smooth curve that goes all the way around the face, which is obviously what she's got it 
it's compounding curves, but see how smooth that transition is? But I have to fight that urge over here because we want a comic book representation, not a portrait. So what I need to do is as I start to fill in these details, I have to think about where my style choices are going to come in. Like I might make the teeth a little bit bigger, more apparent. I might, you know, put a little bit more volume to her lips, even though she's got some, you know, pretty nice lips, obviously. But maybe we'll just thicken them up just a little bit, stylize them, maybe bend uh, some of the curves here a little bit more. You know, accentuate the curves, basically. Kind of over stylize those. And we got to remember, if we put a little upturn right here, ever so slightly, she's going to look like she's smiling. If we're going for that surprise kind of, you know, um, surprise look, I guess, like looking over her shoulder and kind of taking in the, the information, while well, in her case, looking up over. Uh, and I want to keep that because I actually like that look. I think another tricky part about when, uh, when you're doing this is not to compromise. So if you have this idea and you say, okay, I'm going to look at this illustration or this photo and I want to capture the position of the face, the look, the emotion, but I want to, you know, draw it in my own style, my own details. You have to commit to that and you really have to try to get that because it's real easy to just start drawing and go, well, this is looking good. I'll just take it in a whole other direction. And I'll always reiterate on this channel, that's not good practice because you want to always be thinking in terms of like say an editor handed you this and said, this is the pose I want, capture it, but you know, make it look like your style or whatever. I don't know if an editor's going to say it to you, but, uh, but anyway, in a team setting, you have to be ready for things like that. I've had, um, people on storyboard, to, you know, do that to me. They're like, we want this exact painting style or whatever. They don't usually uh, give you an exact pose, but sometimes, sometimes they actually do give you an exact reference and say, just, you know, just use this. But, at any rate, so here's the part where I can almost say enough of it's on the page. You know, I got to, you know, obviously get the rest of her nose in there and things like that. But enough of it's here where I can see it. And, like, I don't want to keep copying her. I want to, I might get her eye. I kind of like that shape in her eyelids right there. So get that in there. But that's probably enough right there. So what I'll do now is get rid of this pretty lady over here. Oh, I guess that's not getting rid of her. Get rid of her like that. Thanks for everything you did for us. All right, duplicate. And then, you know, little things like flip it, resize it, tilt it. Anything you can do to like kind of re-envision it. But the main thing is going to be the soft erase. So as I do this and go to erase. All right, so soft erase this back. And you see I got to fix some things. The eyes are crooked, face of the shape, uh, face of the shape. Shape of the face is wrong. My phone kicks on because it thinks I said something to it. Stupid phone. Okay, anyways. So now what I want to do is focus on drawing through this and really stylizing. So I got to say, okay, what, what makes it my style? What look do I want? You know, obviously I've got this mannequin. I've got this uh, sketch in place. But I want to, you know, maybe point out the chin a little bit more. You know, maybe make the uh, shape of the face a little bit more defined. I'm going to definitely stylize the nose. So a lot of times I'll try to do the less is more approach. So I'll do like the nostril, underneath of the nose, and that's it. I'll try to leave it alone. In fact, I'll usually like erase back a little bit of the bridge. I might hint to that little shape right there, but I'll wait. I'll get it out of there first and see how it reads like that. So very simplified, very light, kind of an airy, airy vibe, if that makes any sense. Uh, skinny neck. Kind of a long, you know, skinny neck there. And then for the mouth, you know, the mouth looks strange. It looks a bit wide. So I might thin the lips back out, but first I want to draw it back in. Again, remember to like kind of skip lines here and there and use shadows and shapes and things like that. So that generally looks a bit more stylized and a tad more impressive than just tracing a line around everything.
So something like that. I don't know if I like that little line I just put there, so I'll delete it. Okay, so now the eye, I'll probably use this eye and then I'll fix this one because you see how bad it is. Like, whoa, what was I doing there? Uh, you know, remember to draw through, give yourself accurate reference lines. One of the main things is that you're going to pick up on right here is that this line, let me actually add a layer so I can show you what I'm talking about. Let's bring my little layers box over here for you. And so there's our sketch layer. I'm going to add a new layer over top. And I'm going to draw a reference line. So say even the mouth is a little bit crooked from the nose. So we've got this, you know, continuity that we need to have uh, that go through the face. So the mouth should line up to the nose. See how that's crooked. And sometimes it can be an expression, but it's really not this time. And then the eyes are way off. Look at that. So that's kind of that, that flow that should be uh, evident. In fact, you could probably get away with tilting it a little bit more like this also checking it with the uh, jawline so yeah I think I'll tilt the mouth a bit and the eye is quite a bit so I'm gonna bring this up a little bit I think the eye I think this eye is low uh, the other thing that you can check is the width of the eye generally will bring you down to the nose here but actually we're going for a more stylized eye so I'm just gonna go ahead and do a little bit of a cheat here Nobody's looking, nobody's paying attention. It's all good. And you see how that cleaned it up right there. The mouth I could probably get away with, but I'll, I'll go ahead and fix that too. So let me see if that improves the look of the mouth. And we'll get back to drawing here, folks. Yeah, maybe. Oh, what was that? Wrong tool. Okay, bring that back up and I'll use this to kind of make sure I don't skew off. So now with the stylized eye, I want to, you know, I'm going to use a lot more line weight on the top eyelid, obviously. Bring that tear duct down. And if you remember, she was looking up and I feel like we kind of, well, not we, me, I did it. I feel like I've lost that element. So I need to bring that pupil up. So generally when somebody's looking up, the pupil is going to touch uh, that top eyelid. Now if it gets hidden, it'll start to look sleepy or lazy or kind of a lazy look or whatever, sleepy look. But it's, So it's kind of funny how there's a lot of subtlety that gets picked up. Uh, you know, small changes to the eye can make huge differences. So... We just want her to look up, hopefully not look too lazy, almost, if anything, uh, a bit more surprised. So I'm going to really bring out this top uh, eyelid now, or a series of eyelashes. I'm actually going to draw them in as a shape, like a solid, like this. And then I like to show the little eyelashes breaking off. So, you know, this is a fun uh, area to implement your style choice. But the main thing is, I, I believe, with uh, comic art, is that this just needs to be very noticeable. Like, this needs to be really heavy, and then it needs to break off as it comes to the bottom of the eye. Just like, uh, if you notice the bottom of the iris, I didn't finish the shape of the iris. Little things like that help to reinforce your lighting. You know, you got to remember, we're only using black and white until the colorist gets a hold of it, so you got to got to really point out the, uh, the light source as much as you can. And again, it's another way to kind of introduce these style choices. So let's just say something like this. A few more little eyelashes. You can do some different designs here and get all creative if you like. Something like that. And then I think with this character, I want to go with the one where she's wearing the mask. So actually, I don't think we got to worry about the, the eyebrows. We're going to actually cover that aren't we so the mask goes something like this and like this and it comes down the side of her face I believe 
and you don't even see the ear. The ear just kind of blends into the shape of the head. Okay, it comes back and points down like that. Something like that. We'll get it right, but that gets us started. So now we can break out the eraser. Soft erase some of this information back. Clean it up a bit. Just like that. And then I'll work on the other side. So basically, I'm just going to pinpoint everything, come over here. I got to make sure to hide this eye a little bit uh, since, you know, the bridge of the nose on an angle is probably going to cover that. So, but we still need to imagine where it's going to hit. And you see the position of the eye and the shape of the eye is still wrong by comparison. So I need to use this line. I need to keep using the other eye for reference. I think the trickiest part about this is not mimicking the exact same shape. Uh, because since it's flipped and it's condensed, the shape is going to change. Even if it's just uh, ever so slightly. But I always feel like it's real easy to get this wrong. So... Hopefully I don't get it wrong this time, but, you know, I might. Bear with me. And the other tricky part is getting the pupil just right. So we're, we have to think about this pupil coming over, and where does it land right here as the eye? You know, you almost picture she's kind of like looking up and over her shoulder. So the eye is going to get tucked back. Something like that. And I think I'm going to go ahead and flip it now because this is another opportunity to see any mistakes as we go. So you got to try to do this as much as possible, especially with the eyes. You'll, you'll generally spot flaws and yeah, it does have a weird shape to it. So let me try to keep condensing that down. And I think that maybe because this angle isn't as extreme as I kind of envisioned, yeah, that position of that eye is pretty far off. So let's... Let's go ahead and scoot that over, but I don't think that's going to fix it. Yeah, that's not going to fix it. So, um, and I actually, I feel like the nose has to come over. So let's, let's do that too. Yeah, that is what it is. At least from this, uh, this angle, that's part of it. And let's go ahead and adjust this eye again. I'm actually going to erase this way back. You know what? When in doubt, let's just do a, a redraw. And I'm going to get rid of a lot of the things that might be distracting. So what I'm looking for is the position and pinpointing where the uh, tear duct is like that. Coming up and over. Condensing this shape down. So it's going to be a different shape, you know, it's just just because it's mirrored, uh, but mainly because it's condensed down. So I think something like that is going to look a bit better. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and get the rest of this detail in place like this. And then this shape, let's bring that over. Let's use this over. I'm kind of ghosting over to the side to find that point. Again, go from this point here, kind of float over and find it there. And then the bottom of her mask comes down, back up. Across the bridge of the nose, something like that. Okay, let's see if we can make this eye work. And forgive me, I wanted to, uh, I felt the urge to time lapse this, but I always feel like, you know, you're not seeing exactly what's going on when I time lapse, right? So, tell you what, let's do this. This will be a good opportunity to uh, ask this question to you guys. 
Comment below and let me know what's your favorite. When do you appreciate a time lapse and when do you uh, appreciate real time? Let's open up that d discussion because I'll tell you what it is as, as an artist is I, w I feel like I don't want to bore you. you know, I want you to be excited about watching videos. I want you to be excited about the process. Uh, so then I'll think, okay, well, is this too repetitive? Is this too boring? Should I just speed through this? Uh, so you you let me know there what uh, what you feel in that regard. I feel like the real time is the is actually the best way to learn. But then I'll post videos like that, and you know they don't always do as well because there's just it takes a while. It's not as quick. I think people oftentimes come to YouTube with the intention to get in, get out, you know, learn what they got to know for right now, and keep on trucking. All right, so you see this is pretty messy, but I'm, I'm actually just trying to get, again, kind of get the broad strokes in place. So even though it's messy, I can see into it. I'll do a la layer of refinement and clean this up, but I just want to get some of that in there and then check the work. So let's pan back a little bit. So now the first thing that I'm seeing, I'll flip it again, but there's too much white. So the space here is different. And I think it's right over here, but I'll, I'll keep picking at it. Um, let me do this. I'm also going to resize it and get in those uh, cool little thingies that are attached to her head. I think that's the technical term, thingies. So something like this. Like that. And one off to the other side. I think they come in more, don't they? So something like that. So now it's starting to look like Harley Quinn. And then obviously there's the color down the middle. And I think everything reverses with her, right? But we'll just go ahead and leave it like that for now. And let's go ahead and flip her again. So this is just a great thing to be in the habit of. Uh, so yeah, it didn't jump out and, and hit me like a ton of bricks that the eyes were horrible. Uh, they're still not perfect, but I should be able to get them to work now. So what I'll do is get rid of things like my little line going across the face. Uh, kind of keep checking the work, but I'm actually going to uh, soft erase it now and clean it up. And then also render out the, uh, you know, the suit texture or whatever. One side is dark, one side is light. Um, I can't remember what side is what. If it's the right side is dark. So let's let's go for that. And I, I mean, I guess we can flip it because there's not anything here in this design where I couldn't flip it and get away with it. But uh, with glares, I just tenor, yeah, excuse me, I can't talk today. Generally, find a hot spot or a highlight on the material. So I might pick up the highest point of the uh, suit, and then a little bit of uh, edge lighting or rim lighting or whatever you want to call it. That'll help separate and not lose this shape from the. Uh, I don't know what these are called. Thingies, I think, is the technical term. Like I believe I already said. And same thing, I'll try to find a bit of a hot spot. Maybe another little line. You can do as many of these little glares as you want. And then maybe a little bit of edge lighting for the, uh, the top of it. Maybe a tiny bit here where you see these wrinkles. I can always go back and do that with a, a whiteout or a clear pen when I ink it or whatever I decide to do here. Maybe a bend of light in there, a little tiny glare here. I could do some rendering lines on the edge of it, whatever. And I think these are just white, but you could do like a little, little glare, a little something there, a little pizzazz. And then again, each time I revisit this, I want to try to stylize it a bit more. So I want to make sure that by the end of this, you don't look at it and go, well, I just drew from a photo, photo reference, you know? like. I think that you know it gets undermined that that's like cheating or something. That's a bad thing, and it's really not. It's definitely not. In fact, in the very beginning, I think that it makes a lot of sense. Uh, and if you get used to just grabbing certain elements from it, then you're okay. You're going to learn immensely from that process, and probably get to a point where you don't even need to do that anyways. So, I just find that on certain occasions, it's a nice way to learn and get the job done. So. 
All right, so I'm going to tighten up a little bit here. You see I, my lines are pretty scratchy when I'm working from a distance there. And I still feel like the mouth is a bit oddly shaped, maybe just too wide. So I'm going to try to just modify this again. Yeah, I think I like that better, just not so wide on the face. Really makes the eyes look bigger by comparison anyways, so... Little, tiny little bits of shadow here and there. Beef up the line weight. Forgive me as I get quiet and try to concentrate. Okay, and let's see, let's, uh, I guess we can do the eye first. The eyes have it. You guys are probably like, dude, that wasn't even funny. That wasn't even really a joke. That was just like, that wasn't a joke. I know, I can't be funny all the time, people. I'm an artiste, not a comedian. But you see here, I'm just trying to bring out a little bit more detail to these eyes. A little more fun to look at, so they're just not so plain Jane. I always feel like this is a really good spot for saying, hey, this is my artwork. Like, like you can always tell an artist, uh, an artist's work by the way they detail the eyes. I mean, obviously, there's a lot of areas within their work you can look at and go, oh, that's so-and-so's work. But uh, I really feel like the eyes are a kind of a signature within the... Uh, the art style and as I probably said a hundred times on this channel you should really focus on getting better at eyes because um, that's where we look first when we identify with somebody even our characters something like that and hopefully she still looks like she's looking up and back so I'm trying to be aware of that as well like I don't want to lose that uh, perspective because I I felt myself uh, veering away from that and the other I don't think that needs to be filled in the other versions as I was rendering this so a lot of things you tend to lose when rendering and one of them is uh, small details that you kind of throw in and then as you tighten up sometimes you'll lose those details uh, or you'll lose um, a certain creative vibe to the work, certain flow, and your work will begin to stiffen up. So just be aware of it. It's just something we all try to fight against as we get you know more and more into rendering, because rendering is kind of a different process than the loose sketching and the uh, and the uh, conceptual design of it. That's why uh, really rough sketching is so energetic. You know, you look at it, it's got such motion and, and energy to it. And some people get really good at retaining that in their work. And if you can do that, then I think your, your artwork will definitely show a certain level of professionalism. OK, 
Okay, so let's get this other iris in place. And I'm actually going to start with the pupil because I feel like this one's a bit off, so. And a bit large. So I'm going to draw that first. shape of that eye is a bit weird. Drop shadow on the iris. Remember the drop shadow is the shadow from the brow or the top eyelid, but it, uh, it always seems to make the eyes look more depthy if that's in there, so get that in there. And I've got the eyelids different widths, so i got to check that as well. Good enough. Okay, let's go on to the mask now because I'm this video is getting awfully long. And that's the other reason I time lapse, folks. You're actually getting to see how very slow I draw now. Putting it all out there, people. This is the real deal. I gotta bring this point right up to the bridge of the nose. Now the tricky part is if I draw this line connecting like that, it's not gonna be correct, right? So I gotta move this line, uh, let's see, it would be down. And I can also, again, pinpoint from over here, but the line is actually gonna drop because the face is lower than the nose, right? So I just have to make sure that these lines don't line up to this line. So just little details like that help to make something read a bit more correctly. I could also, you know, go straight up from these points and maybe catch the other point here. That'll probably help it. Same thing with here, go straight up. And I think her mask connects this, but I've, I think I've seen it a bunch of ways. And I'm also pretty sure this is a very old style compared to what she looks like now or there's so many depictions of her. But I just saw an animated series where she was like this, so this should still be fine, I guess. So there's that. Let's get this line here. And, you know, we can do some different things with the lips. Uh, generally, the light's going to catch the bottom lip and the top lip is going to be in shadow. So we could do a little bit of a glare like that. We can figure out if we want to fill that in or we just want to let that be uh, kind of handled by the coloring process, which is what I think I'm going to go for. And let's just get a few more lines in place for the suit. And we should be able to wrap this baby up. And you guys can tell me how awful it is or how amazing, whatever you feel like you want to do. But hopefully this gives you some clues on how you can use reference. And I'm going to bring the reference back and set it side by side. And, you know, you can see if I was able to um, stylize it enough to where you don't look at it and go, oh, that's that same picture. I mean, you're going to know. Obviously, you watched me do it. But uh, would you have known that by just looking at the artwork? Um, and do you find, you know, let me know. Do you find that helpful? Do you think that that's a... Uh, good technique you know just let me know what you think that's what the comment section below is for and we can all learn together and this is the lighter color so we could do some different rendering lines some shadows whatever so let's see and I would still go back through. Obviously, I still got to clean up this other side. And uh, I think this, this line's a little too close. Like, there wouldn't be a line right through here, would there? Looks like a bit of a tangent. Let's just change the shape of that real quick. And I believe the mask would be 
filled in. So we could do some glare lines on that real quick. And remember to really beef up some of these lines so that the artwork jumps off the page. I think her neck is dark as well, so some little glare lines in there and some little rendering, something like that. So so that gives us a um, an idea, and generally I would probably go a little bit tighter, but I know this video is just getting really long. So let's say that this is where we want to carry it to. You know, we could attach some kind of shoulders or clavicles and ho however far you want to take that. Now we know that we're actually going to be introducing this to that other artwork as well. So what I want to do is, let's see here, if I take the good old Joker, duplicate him and duplicate her. I like to always have a backup. Uh, and then I'll, I'll sandwich them together. But actually before I do that, let's go ahead and find that other image and bring that back up. Okay, so there you can see the reference and the animated style that, you know, the interpretation that I did of Harley Quinn. So you can see that there's a lot of you know variations, and I probably could have learned a lot more. Uh, this you know woman, forgive me, I don't know what it is, but she has an ex exquisite face. You know, uh, it's worth studying further. But you know, hopefully, I was able to get parts of the pose in there, and still you know do it in a relatively quick amount of time, so that you're not eating up the day trying to find the right reference. And just remember, you want to try to grab just certain elements from the reference, move on, apply your style, go on to the next panel. Uh, so if I was to take this now, um, you know, you can let me know how I did if I was able to do a, a decent job or not. Uh, and then I combined it with the uh, the Joker piece, and that's how I might combine those into a panel. So as to where this one I did with no reference, because you know it's a pretty easy shot, straightforward. And you can see it's got a lot more style interpretation there. Uh, but then I think this still carries through as being a stylized representation. You see, I changed their eyes. Because uh, I actually noticed that when I positioned her next to the Joker, it looked like she was looking too far up. So sometimes you do have to adjust, you know, things like the pupils and, you know, whatever you can fix. But again, remember that it's a great technique for getting past a problem area in your work, learning while you complete the work. That's the main takeaway. So I'd love to know what you think in the comments section below. If you enjoy this type of video, what else you'd like to see? What are some of the problem angles and shots that you face? How do you get past them? Share it with the audience. Appreciate your support of the channel. As always, keep drawing, keep having fun, and I will talk to you soon.